What's up boys and girls, I'm Richard, and today we're basically going to be going on about how Ezel is still viable in premium format even though we lost Wonder Ezel. So, if you haven't heard, uh, with the new ban list that Bushy put out for March, effectively, um, you can't run Wonder Ezel in premium anymore. The old one, the one from GBT07, not the newer one, which is the point of this profile. So you can't superior ride from your Ezels from your deck anymore over and over. Which kind of sucks, which was kind of fun to do to Gabe over and over and over again. Gabe, if you're watching this, I know you loved it, and I'm, and we miss you. Um, so then anyways, uh, since you can't do that, it begs the question if this deck can still keep up with decks like Token Katrina and NLK, just being able to spear it in different grade 3s, you know, win with Gastille, and all that fancy shenanigans. Can it still keep up? The answer, which I'm pretty much convinced of, is yes, because this deck is still, still good. <laughs> um, let's just get right into it, and you guys can see what I'm talking about. So, the starter is still going to be uh, the newer Kirf, because old Kirf got banned, or restricted, basically. Um, so, you write on it, you draw a card. Uh, Blonde Ezra requires Kirf in the soul, so Kirf's your starter. All right, next up for grade threes, let's just get right into it. We're running four copies of Blonde Ezel. So you run Blonde Ezel because it's a Blonde Ezel deck, right? Obviously. So you have your Axe Skill, which is how you superior ride. If you have Bowman and Gareth on the board, you Soul Blast Cure from the Soul, you ride it from hand. And then since main phase is a thing and Spear X, you can Counter Blast 2 to stride, you can just stride as soon as you hit grade three. So that's cool. The other skill is when it attacks, you can call a card from your hand. You never use that because striding is a thing. But you got to run four blonde because you want to be able to get that spear right off as consistently as possible. Next up, I am running four copies of Blazing Lion Platin Ezel. Now, before the rule was you basically wanted to run as many Ezels as you could just because you wanted to pull off Wonder Ezel skill, the old one. But since you can't spear right from the deck, um, you have to kind of draw into these things, which is kind of weird of a concept <laughs> for this deck. So you want to run four copies so that you can draw into it. And the skill is still really good with uh, Spear X. So what it does is act, you kind of blast one. It changes your first drive check of the turn to looking at the top two, call one to the board, trigger check the other. Um, and if you have two or more grade threes in the soul, then it applies to your second or more drive check. So if you have two grade threes in the soul, and you go into you do this skill, go into Spear X, your triple drive becomes looking at the top two per drive check, calling one, picking the other, essentially looking at the top six and picking your triggers. Still really good, helps you fill your board back up because triple driving. So for sure, you want to run Platinazel. Um, next up, because we can't, you know superior ride into Ezels anymore. I had to up up the Raven Hairs up. So I got two of the generic boys and I got two of the shiny boys. Planning on getting more shiny boys if I actually end up playing this deck in person ever. <laughs> Rip premium. Why does no one like this format? Anyways, so gotta run as many Ezels as I can, especially the Raven Hair, because the Raven Hair helps fill the soul with more grade threes. So if I go into Blonde Ezel, and let's say I cannot superior stride into Spear X uh, if I'm missing like the combo to you know stride on while my opponent's at grade one if I don't have the damage needed. Um, this is an alternative for sure. It's a it's a pretty decent alternative. You counter blast one act. If your Vanguard is Blonde Ezel, you ride it from hand, and so that gives you another gift. And the other skill is when it attacks, you counter blast one, and you gains 15k in extra crit, and your opponent can't use Sentinels. So it's still good at early game, pushes a lot. Uh, it sucks because the whole point of Wonder Ezel is you do this, then you call Wonder Ezel, and then you search out Platina and ride Platina, do Platina skill, and then blah, 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 blah. So the deck is slowed down a lot, but you still want to have the Ezels to even get Platina Ezel off to begin with. And Raven just has a really good skill. You know, if you want to go early with that. So, good alternative. And then it's to grade 3, you can always discard it for Strife Fire. Alright, on to the fun stuff, which is the grade 2s. 
So because we can't run the old Wonder Rosal, we're running the new one. Flame Wind Lion. Wonder Ezel. We're running this because it can help you superior ride in the Blonde Ezel. Meaning the whole point of the deck now is just to superior ride in the Spear X as fast as possible. So if you don't have Bowman, uh, Bowman and Ezel in hand, as long as you have Wonder Ezel and Kirif in hand, uh, or not Kirif, sorry, Howl, if you have Wonder Ezel and Howl in hand, that's another alternative for spear riding. So you know, you can do that while this is on the van circle, so now Bowman's not just your only ride target. And the other skill is when it's placed, uh, you can call a card from your hand. So it's a good way to do extended attacks. Um, you know, it helps proc off Din Drain, because Din Drain has to be called by a card effect. And it can work when you call it out with Spear X or Glorious Raining and other stuff, because it doesn't have to be called from hand, it's just when placed. So, pulling out more cards. Um, it just sucks that we lost the old Wonder Ezel, because that's what made the deck fun, right? <laughs> Alright, so basically I'll go back into the whole Wonder Ezel thing again and talk about more about that combo. Next up we gotta run for Bowman. So Bowman is now still your main ride if you have Ezel in hand. If not, it's gonna be Wonder Ezel your main ride. Uh, when you place it, you discard one, you call it Gareth. That's essentially what's giving you the superior ride for Ezel to begin with. So that's what you gotta work with. But Bowman's still good because its other abilities, when it's placed by a card effect, it gets 3k. Still pretty decent for a 12k beater. And yeah, it's pretty much it. Y'all know what Bowman does. Alright, this card is still really good, so I'm not taking it out at all. It's uh, Providence Angel, or Providential Angel. Uh, it's Literally just because it's the Ultima combo and it just makes your opponent only be able to PG once is just really funny. So uh, its skill is uh, if you have one or less in hand, you can blast one, your opponent can only use a perfect guard or a sentinel uh, once during the turn. And that's it. Like, until the end of the turn, your opponent can only call to a one sentinel. <laughs> so basically it's a big, big fuck you to Lilga with, you know, being able to um, bloom and bounce multiple copies. It's like you can only use one now. Um, Ultima just makes a really, really big board and combo. Uh, it's not going to be as big because we don't have as many Excel markers to work with um, because we lost Wonder Ezel, but it's still a really good card. And since we have Raven Herd that we're running in the deck, we'll probably still more likely or not get that second Excel marker pretty quickly. So it's still fine. You know, you just need the two XLs in your front row, and Ultima is still a pretty good kill, especially with this. Um, your opponent being able to PG once. So, for sure, running, I'm <laughs> keeping this thing. All right, next up, great ones. Uh, we're running the old Howl uh, because uh, it doesn't say which Howl you need for Wonder Ezel's skill. And I'm running the new Mithril Lion, or that came out completely wrong. <laughs> I'm not, it's not even a new myth line. It's a sacred twin beast white lion. Um, you basically are doing the old combo, which I loved from before, where you, you gave yourself a damage, unflip it with howl, and then you use the two counter blasts that you now have so that you are able to uh, stride into spear X while your opponent's a grade one. So this combo works still, and it works even better now because if you don't have... Bowman, uh, and you have Wonder Ezel, all you need is one copy of each of these, and you can get the, the combo off. So if your opening hand has these, plus a grade one that you can just ride for your grade one ride turn, um, you can get off into Spirix the turn that you ride into this. So making it a little easier, uh, it's essentially um, the same thing as if you had Bowman and Ezel and either of these, a very complicated hand to get off. But with um, Wonder Ezel, this is way more likely. So um, you gotta you gotta make do with what you can, and be going into Sphere Ride is pretty important for the deck to keep up. So definitely got to take advantage of that. So next, I'm running three copies of Listener to Dindrain. So Dindrain skills when it's placed by a card ability, so blast one to either draw a card or 
counter charge, and if you choose to counter charge, you gain 3k. Uh, I'm not running Bernius because Bernius's whole point was being able to ride, um, use the Bernius skill on ride to move it to soul, call a card from hand. You would call the old one Ezel, use old one Ezel to draw, to ride a new Ezel, and then since you're still in the ride phase, you would be able to stride right afterwards. Pretty fun stuff, but uh, Bernius doesn't really seem to have really much of a purpose, especially with the combo I'm trying to do, which is just focusing on the superior striding, getting that extra damage, you know, doing that fun little combo. Um, there's not a lot of room for Bernius, and Dindrain can do a lot more, especially since we have Wonder Ezel, the, the new Wonder Ezel, which is when you call, you know, call something from hand, you can call Dindrain, proc off Dindrain, Soul Blast to draw. Uh, lastly, or almost lastly, we got one more after this. We got two copies of Gareth. Uh, you just gotta have a search target for Bowman. You only need two because they only use it for the superior ride. You need space in the grade one lineup, and the two Gareth work pretty fine. Um, so it's when it's placed by a card ability, kind of blast one, it gains 10k. So the two Gareth always work fine because you only use it for the superior ride, anyways. Lastly, for the fun, 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 fun stuff. One copy of Night of Resolution, Bethic. So, uh, if you did watch uh, the finals for Worlds, uh, you know you'll know that Gold Paladin won not with Ultima or Spirex or any. It was with the GB8, which was really funny, and the G and it was because it comboed off with this card. So I'm literally only running this just for that GB8 combo. I was trying to play test it with Gabe, and it was just very difficult. Like, I just wouldn't get end up getting to GBA. The game would just kind of be over before then, or Ultima would be the obviously better choice. But uh, since this deck is a lot slower now, and we have a lot less Excel markers to work with, there could be the possibility that striding into something else or waiting to get to GBA would be the alternative. Therefore, keeping this lying around for funsies would be really cool. So... Um, I'll just read off the skill. It's uh, its effect is basically based off the number of things you called for the turn. So two or more it gains 5k, four or more. Uh, it does not rest when it boosts. So if it has that ability from Celtus Winner, which is on boost, uh, look at top, at the end of the battle that it boosts, look at top two, call something. Since it's not resting, you can still boost it over and over and over again. So, and if you put a trigger on this, and you keep on calling things, this still keeps the power, keeps giving that boosted power from the trigger over and over and over again, essentially looping the deck until you run out of cards. Pretty fun stuff. Uh, lastly, the pretty obvious stuff, it's uh, crits and triggers. So we got four of our vanilla V-series crit, which is one of victory because it's classic. Uh, four copies of Theodora because it's a trigger with a skill for premium that gives 10k and it's when your vanguard attacks move to soul draw a card then gets 10 gb1 obviously um four heals because you know you gotta heal and uh g guardians exist and 20k shields are nice and then four copies of your pgs because you know draw triggers are cool and draw triggers that are sentinels are also cool so Lineup has never really changed for the trigger lineup in this deck. Gotta keep it simple. Lastly, we're going back into the G zone. So I am running three copies of Spear X because this is basically how you want to get the deck to function. So uh, what it does is act uh, if your Vanguard's at grade three and you call two more things with a turn, unite. Uh, you kind of lost two, discard any card from your hand and you stride it fate from your G-Zone face down. And then the other ability is once per turn, you Soul Blast 1, flip a card in your G-Zone face up, and you look at the top five, and you call two among them, call them, shuffle your deck. Pretty simple, but really, really good. Combos really well with Platina, because you use Platina first, then you use this. So you have your triple drive becomes like looking at scrying six and picking your triggers. Um... And just being able to stride while your opponent's at grade one is a pretty pretty cool idea, not gonna lie. So definitely want to run multiple copies of this. And I ran running three because the comboing off of Platinum is so good that I might want to do it more than once. And there are times when if there is a game where I can't really do anything other than just stride normally, this is the best stride target just because 
it doesn't have a unite requirement to function it just has its ability to call two cards for free essentially since you have plenty of soul so makes it a really good stride target I don't want to run out of copies of this to go into because it's just that good of a card uh, next up I'm running three copies of Gurgit Helios classic boy right here so Gurgit Helios uh, gives you quad drive uh, if you're in unite or sorry if you flip a copy of itself uh, it gets quad drive and then unite ability is uh no sorry i did get it right it was just unite ability is a quad drive man reading is hard the gb3 is um this gets 5k for each of your regards and your opponent cannot guard a grade one or higher not really that important unless you're playing against decks that you know for a fact run grade one pgs like neonectar maybe running um loga and shadow paladin lord running ezras for their grade one pgs this could come in handy for that, but they still have G Guardians that can fill up the shield really well. So the GB3 is all right. But the main point of this is for the quad drive. I'm running three because I just uh, basically use one as flip fodder. And if I decide not to use a flip fodder, I still can use two to flip for the skill. And the third one, the GB3 is still really good. I don't need the quad drive. So... Three copies is enough. Next up, I'm running two copies of Glorious Raining. Glorious Raining is basically for those situations where I'm like, hmm, you know, I have a, a pretty decent amount of XL markers since I got all the way up to plat uh, Platinazzle with my three markers and my board. Um, maybe I can go into Glorious and, you know, multi-attack my opponent to death. You know, situational card. So what it does is... Uh, when it attacks, if you unite, you can bless one, flip a copy of itself in the G zone, choose two regards, return them to the bottom of the deck, you look at the top seven, and from those seven, you call equal to the number of face-up cards in your G zone, and uh, shuffle the rest back into your deck, and if you call three or more, you counter charge and soul charge. So you get the counter charge, repaying its cost, you gain soul, soul helps with like, din drain and stuff, but... Not a lot of stuff in this deck. Soul blasts a lot. Uh, I might start running Maligant just to counter charge more. Uh, I might take out take out Bethok just because if I'm finding myself not using the GB8 at all, it's not really worth it. I'd rather have the counter charge just so I can you know use Ultima and stuff like that. Um, but you know, Glorious Raining situational card, good for multi attack, so pretty good to have in the deck. Uh, one copy of Radiant Sword Gurgit, the SGR. Uh, this is basically just flip fodder for the most part. Uh, I'm just going to use it right away to flip over for Spear X. Um, but if I do have a lot of the soul, which I mentioned before, I, you gain a lot of soul from uh, White Lion soul charging, from uh, Howl soul charging, you get... Um, you know, Glorious Raining, all this stuff. So you'll have plenty of soul to work with at one point if you're not going to be blasting all that soul. So what you can do is if you know for a fact like you have a pretty decent board going on or you can make a board, you can just go into this, kind of bless one, soul bless two, do it multiple times, and you can give your Vanguard a really big buff. Uh, if you have a Providential Angel out, you know, your opponent can only PG one thing, so... You know, you can make them PG van, and then the rest of it, they have to use G guards and stuff. They can't use PGs. Again, very, very, very situational, but it is something that could happen. But for the most part, this is just flip fire. Next to you, the GB8, because the GB8 is what one world, so we're going to run it. <laughs> um, it's uh, Unite. You pick up, when it attacks, you pick four of your units, and those units gain red text, auto. At the end of the battle that this attacks or boosts, you look at the top two cards, call one, uh, call one from among the two, uh, put the other on the bottom, and it gets 5k. So you do that combo where essentially you're just, you put Bethok here, you swing, you give the skill to Bethok, uh, whatever is boosting Bethok, you swing, use the skill, or, you know, swing, use the skill, call, um swing declare that you're boosting but since it doesn't rest it doesn't you know boost or doesn't really resting anything you don't have to worry about moving it um use a skill call something from the top two it's still standing so you can do it over and over and over again so 
that's what you do. But um, again, I was playtesting it out and it never really got to GB8. So I was just kind of like, oh, never get to really try out that fun combo rip. Lastly, Ultima, still the win con for the deck in my opinion. Um, since you're not going to be like Excel markering out up the butt like you were before with Wonder Rezzel, uh, you won't have as many Excel markers to kind of kill your guarantee a kill to your opponent where your opponent's like, oh, I'm for sure dead because my opponent has seven front row rear guards and um, they're all swinging with three crit and I can only guard six or something like that. So you definitely it's going to be a lot slower. So going into Ultima is not just going to be as brain dead as it was before. It's still, it's still going to be a little brain dead, but um, you're going to be like, hmm, I don't know, maybe my opponent can survive this. But it's kind of blast two, uh, one place, you look at four cards, call two, the other two get put at the top of your deck, and for the turn, uh, your trigger effects are applied to all your units. So you put two crits on top, and then all your units gain 10k and an additional crit for each trigger, so that's pretty pretty dumb, pretty dumb dumb there. Because um, if your opponent's at three, they can't take anything, so uh, Ultima's still really good. G Guardians, uh, one copy of Elise. Uh, Elise helps get to GB8 and also helps you get to Ultima if you want to first ride Ultima, if you went second. Um, four copies, or it's not four, sorry, three. Three copies of Slamy Flare. So Slamy Flare, still really good because grade ones and triggers have more shield, making it a buff. Um, you choose one of your rear guards, put it on the bottom of your deck, look at top five, pick two. There are different grades, call them the Guardian Circle, so that's really helpful. Um, and then lastly, I just have the one Rack Home. Rack Home is basically flip, flip fodder, but um, Rack Home, since we do run grade ones with 5k shields, uh, they don't they might not really do much in terms of hand for Guardian. So what you can do is you can go into Rack Home for a simple G guard that you will need to do, and you can use its skill to discard a grade one you know you don't need, and maybe draw into a more defensive card like a trigger. Or maybe draw into something that you really need that you're looking for. So a drop and draw is always good. So that's basically it for the deck. So I guess I'll just really, really, really quickly kind of explain the whole point. Is you are essentially you're supposed to be on your grade one. Um, you essentially would have taken like a damage or something. So like boop, there's your one damage. Uh, what you do is a turn you ride to grade two you want to have um, a wonder Rezzle, a mithril and a howl in your hand so if you can if you can start off your hand post mulligan and you got these three and a grade one that you can ride for the turn you're pretty much set so you go first you ride your opponent gives you a damage uh, and then it's your turn so you ride into wonder Rezzle. so wonder Rezzle still has the Ezel name very important nothing happens you call White Lion, White Lion's skill. You counter last one. You soul charge the cop top card of your deck because you have an Ezel Vanguard, and you put the top card of your deck into your damage zone. So now you have two damage with one face down. Then you call Howl. So Howl's skill is if you have an Ezel Vanguard, you soul charge one, and you counter charge. So with that, you now have two face-up damage, which sets you up for Spear X. So then you use Wonder Rezzle's skill, which is you Soul Blast 1, retire a Howl on your rearguard circle, and then you search your deck for a Blonde Ezzle and ride it from the deck. So now you're on a grade 3. So you get your Gift, you choose Gift 2 because you're good, and then you draw a card, and then since you're still in the main phase, you just kind of lost two, discard a card from your hand, and then you stride into Spear X. So this is all, well essentially if you went first, your opponent is still at grade one, well this is all going on. So then now you're at Spear X, you can use its skill to Soul Blast and, you know, call cards from the deck. Um, you swing with your triple drive, and then at the end of the turn, you pick a card from your damage zone, it stays face down, and you return it back into the deck after that whole thing, and finishing off Lion's skill. So that's basically the whole point of running 
the old, the newer Wonder Rezzle in the deck is to still be able to pull off that Superior Red combo and still try to keep up with the, the fast paceness of the premium meta. So that's basically it for the deck eight, the, the deck profile. <laughs> um, and we'll see how this deck performs. You know, it, it might not be able to keep up with Katrina, who knows? But I do think that deck is still really, really, really good because of all the different techs and different things that you can do to help you stride. Being able to still go into Platina with Spear X is still a really good combo, which has helped the deck in the in you know in the past. And you know you still have Ultima, and Ultima is a really great win condition. So I think the deck is fine. I don't think it's dead for for sure. The deck is definitely not going to die in the meta, but it will definitely not be like as high as a representation as it was like at Worlds, where it was like almost. Like, majority of the top eight was just Ezel decks, which was crazy and not okay. So, you know, we'll see how, how it goes. But this is what I would be playing if there were a premium locals that I could go to and enter with. And that's pretty much what I'd be playing. So I hope you all liked it. Leave your thoughts, comments, questions, and concerns below. And I'll see you all next time in the next deck profile. Bye.